The best advice is to just take it easy. If you don't feel safe going on the roads, then don't. In Atlantic Beach, it's just been a battle against the wind. I know I've lost my hat today a good 10 times, and I think I'm about ready to ditch it. So other than the wind, we're doing fairly well down at the beach. And if you've been watching us in the past hour, you'll notice that they've been shifting back and forth. And that's the nature of this storm. It's going to be shifting quite a bit. So at one moment, you might be seeing snow. At the next moment, you might be seeing sleet. Currently at the Outer Banks, we're seeing sleet. Folks, we're here in Swansboro, North Carolina, where we have the weather girl. She is trying to catch a jumping mullet. And you have to catch him by hand because you cannot catch him with a hook. So she's been practicing for a long time now. Folks, look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Only in Swansboro can you do that. But there was a cloud in front of me like the whole way. That was probably the culprit. That's right. <laughs> Yep, more of those. The scattered showers where you could miss it completely and then quickly roll into an area where it's very tropical, very heavy. But the one that I really want to point out is this branch right here. I found it just a few feet away from one of the big pine trees. It's still alive, still has pine cones. And when I found it, I don't know if you can see it here, we had grass. This was shoved into the ground from those fast winds. This is milkweed. And believe it or not, just one monarch butterfly caterpillar can devour an entire plant just by itself. We saw that first round kick out. We got that break. We have that cold air still wedging in. And we're watching all this moisture slide up ahead of round two. This is a big system. This is going to be a bigger system for other states rather than us. But you'll probably see it in national headlines. Good afternoon, Anna. We were in this very same spot at 4 a.m. And when the winds turned on, it was almost like someone flipped a switch, went from calm to this very quickly. And it hasn't let up since. And I tried to tell her, don't play with Seamus. Ah! And she wouldn't listen. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not. For some of the residents that couldn't make it outdoors to see the petting zoo, they have a solution. Meet Hummer. I can't believe it. That's right. This giant llama ditched his pen. Mr. Donnie, look, look at the llama. And hit the halls of the nursing home. You wouldn't believe where he's been. He's been in schools. He's been in classrooms. I have my official pickleball paddle. I've got my official pickleball. And we're ready to give it a go. After proving myself on the practice court, <laughs> it was time to take on the ambassador. YMCA will be open for play three days a week, so I'll have plenty of time to practice before a rematch. In Craven County, Ellen Baca, Fox Eastern Carolina News. Well, good evening and welcome back. If we put these storms into motion over the last hour and a half, you can see that line that I was telling you about originally setting up as a sea breeze, but now all that heavy tropical air has kind of allowed these storms coming in off the ocean to ride along that boundary and just stay there all day. So it hasn't really moved inland. Another thing that I do want to point out is we do have a significant amount of lightning just now moving to the north of Topsail Beach. Jacksonville, again, get ready, have Block seeing a heavy shower move towards you as well. Half Moon brief recovery before more rain moves in. New Bern, River and Bends, uh, James City seeing an aerial flood advisory as well. This was just issued by the National Weather Service. Included in that, a good portion of Pamlico County as well because of that shower that's tracked on through. Up north near Bell Haven, seeing some of that heavy rain begin to peter out. You'll notice the Washington Chocowinity area also seeing the same story. Now, in the next hour and a half to two hours, our future radar is taking the showers in the same trajectory that they've been going all day very slowly only at about 10 to 15 miles per hour and they're tracking northeast they kind of have that positive tilt with them so in terms of rainfall, if you've been getting it today, anticipate more. That means new burn already up near two inches. In fact, already setting a new daily record maximum for the day. But check out some of these other rain totals. Kenansville, Kinston, less than a tenth of an inch today. I had some Facebook friends tell me that they've seen nothing. Showers to the left, showers to the right, but nothing in their own backyard. And if you look at the temperatures today, there's no question that we got some sunshine to break through the clouds. Greenville, Kinston, even new burn hitting 88 before the day was done. 
temperatures are going to be dropping down into the 70s. Our winds will be out of the south. Overall, we'll watch these storms eventually fall apart, but coastal areas, you might not be clear all night. And here's why. Here's a look at your satellite and radar. We'll zoom way out here. There's that storm system that passed through us yesterday, leaving behind a lot of moisture, and here are more of those coastal showers. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had this rain continue on for a good portion of the evening, especially for our coastal regions, but eventually losing some of that intensity and hopefully losing some of that lightning as well. In terms of what to expect future track wise, our models are having a tough one with this one, but I'll just show you it just in case. Here's six o'clock on through seven. Here's eight. Notice how it wants to get rid of the showers very quickly. Again, I'm not so sure that that's going to happen. I think that we're going to be dealing with rain for a while this evening. Once we get to Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, still have that potential for some of those heavy downpours then 